So let us show an example of composition. And in this case, we would like to compose a distributed system out of channel automata and process automata. So here what we have. We have in general a system of n processes. So we have processes uh, pi, and i is elements of a set of 1 to n. And we have n square channel automata from each process to the other process. So this channel will be from process i to process j. And the composition automaton represents a distributed system where processes communicate through five foot channels. And the global state of the system, this composed automata, is the state for each process plus the state for each channel. In each process, if we took the previous example, would be a vector of values, and the state over each channel would be a queue of messages in transit. So here is a picture, and we have seen that picture before. So, but here I just showed two processes and two channels. So we have a process here, and here, and two channels here. But there are other channels and other processes in the picture. We knew how to compose these together. So let us see what will be the signature of this composed automata. I mean, what will be the a actions of this composed automata, right? So, so the transitions will involve the following actions. We have all the init actions. These are input actions, which deposit a value in process pi, deposit the value value indexed by i. So this is an input action. In fact, if you look to the previous picture, you will see these are the only input actions because all other input action has been now connected to output actions. So we've done within it. Then we have the sends. The sends are outputs from the processes. So it is an output action for each channel. So this is, for example, send from i to j is sending a value vi, which this action will put it into the channel cij. Then we have a deliver output action. These are actions performed by channels. So, for example, deliver the value V on the channel IJ, it's an output action. The first message in the channel CIJ is removed and simultaneously placed into the process PJ's variable at position I in the variable v, uh, val at position I. Then we have a decide, which is an output action. And this output action at each process PI announces the current computed value. And the execution of these actions or events defines what happened in the system. So now let us look to a sample trace and then we are going to go through this sample trace in detail. So we'll have a sample trace where n is 2, it means that we have two processes and two channels, and where the value set v could be any natural number, that is to say non-negative integers, and our function that computes in this local variable val, which is a vector, this function is an addition, just adding the values in the vector. So now let us look to the trace. And the trace really describes what happens in the system now. This is what is observed. So at process P1, its local variable is initialized to the value 2. So this local variable is position number 1 in its val vector. Here, this is an event that happens 
at process P2, it's an input event and it analyzes its own variable to the value one. Then here's an event that is a send event by P1 on the channel C12. This message is then delivered on that channel to process P2. Then we have a send from P2. Then we have a delivery at P1 from the channel C21. And then we have a new initialization at process P1, another initialization at process P2, and then some decision at process P1, and another decision at process P2. So these are the events happening in the system. And in fact, after execution of this trace, you get a unique system state, and that system state has the following values. It has at P1, its val vector will have these values, and at P2, its val vector will have these values. So now let us look to this in detail. So the, the trace de describes what's happening in the system, and what we are going to do is to run it one step at a time. So here we have our trace, and we go run it this way. So this is the trace. And here is the state of the system. So this is P1, and this is P2. And here's the state of the system. And initially, the two val vectors are uninitialized, so its components are undefined. And the two channel, let us say this is, if we call this the channel C12, this is the Q of that channel C12. And if we call this channel C21, this is the content of that channel C21. They are initially empty. That's what we just write it like this. Then we execute the first event, which initializes P1. Here what we get. We initialize this component. Then we execute the second event, which init 1 at process 2. Then we initialize this component. Then we do ascend. So this is ascend on channel C12. So the value here is now in the network. Then we, we are going to do a delivery now. So here is delivery. So the delivery will make this channel empty and then deliver the value at position one in this vector. Then we do ascend again, and this on the channel C21. Oh, so we have the value here, it's sending its own value, one, it's there. And then we do a delivery for that. So now this value is delivered to process P1 at this position. Then we do initialize again. So we did this delivery now. We do initialize again. Then we have four instead of two and one here. And this is still the same. Then we do initialize at P2. At P2, what we get, we get a zero here. And now we have everything. So the vector at P1 is 4, 1. And the vector at P2 is 2, 0. And I decide here does an addition. So it adds 4 plus 1, and that is 5. And then we have a decide at P2, which gives us 2. So remember, this is 4, 1, and that is 2, 0. And if we go back, and look here, that is the vector 4, 1 at P1 and the vector 2, 0 at P2.